Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Jenny from the Chopping Block. Today we have Sunny uh, from London. I want to say London, but you're not from London. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've lived in London for years. So Nottingham, you, right? Nottingham, yes. Nottingham. Okay, so from Nottingham, England. And Sunny is a relationship coach, and I'm honored to have him on today as a guest to share his wisdom. So Sonny and I are both part of Tony Robbins' community, and we both crewed. Um, can you just talk a little bit about your experience with Tony and how you got involved and all that jazz? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the intro. <laughs> you know, I've been excited to come online with you because of the massive, massive work that you've been doing here, their social media, their personal development. It's been amazing. So I'm really grateful to be here with you right now. But with Tony, oh my God, you know, my journey started with him 13 years ago, where I started to read the book Unleash the Power Within. And from there, I really got hooked onto the, the knowledge, the message, and everything that he shared. Then I always watched his YouTube videos, which like, helped me get through my situation. And, um, you know, for me, I started off life um, without a father, because my mom was a single parent that raised us. So we never really had that role model to really take lead on where I wanted to be, to show me how to step into manhood, step into leadership. And then when I found Tony, it was like an instant reaction where I just felt so connected to the message that you were sharing. And then I used to sleep with his voice on. Initially, you would never think that you could sleep listening to that strong voice. Wow. I used to hear him day in, day night. And it was amazing. It helped me transform and really lived the life that I wanted. And now really, um, I, I owe the work that I did with him and learning his techniques, I owe it to a lot of my success in business and in properties, in coaching, everything. And then from crewing with him, I was able to serve others and really give back to the world. How are we looking? I think it's slowed down a it's bit. It's a little, you're like, dancing a little but it's all good it'll I'm catch up hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I see myself so, lagging. <laughs> maybe i'll talk for a minute just so we can catch back up um so i love that you i don't know if you're talking right now because your lips are moving but it's like that movie um <laughs> <laughs> no, I let you talk right now um, so i love that you say that you fell asleep to his voice and um, I do that every night. Like I'll listen to my guided meditations and, you know, last night I was listening to Bob Proctor and, you know, it's just amazing. I think it really deep um, goes into our subconscious that way. And the fact that he was like a father figure to you, what a remarkable human to have to look up to and model. And, um, you know, I think Tony talks a lot about that in his own development and how he had, different people to learn and grow with. Um, yeah. So that was so cool. I think you can still hear me right now. I can hear you, yeah. Okay, perfect. It's a little yeah, lag, yeah. but it's okay. Shall I try stop camera and come back on or? Yeah, you could try that. That usually helps. So how's everyone doing today? I'm having a great day so far. Um, I was at the track a little before this and I ran a little further than I did and I thought that I did worse today. Um, but my brother's like, Jen, no, you ran further. But I felt like it was, I wasn't as, he's like, no, your form was better and you run, you actually ran further. So it's like perspective. Let me see how this goes. There he is. Hey, I'm back on. Woo! <laughs> uh, thank you for that. I'm not too sure what happened there. Okay. We're pretty far away from each other, so. Yes, across the world. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so it is so powerful. Even Bob Platter, you know, all of them share okay. such a beautiful message to be able to be greater than what you are. And, you know, that's also why I love to share with all. And like yourself, you know, to be greater than your current circumstance or current situation, how can you create that future that you need? And right now we're looking into a lot of work with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, everybody's on Joe lately. Love it. Yeah. Have like you touched him? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I do book clubs and we read two of his books together and then somebody shared the, um, actually two different groups shared some of his meditations. And I think that was the first time I realized like how we could literally scientifically proven change, yeah. like literally by rewiring our brain, which is really dope. Oh man, it's so amazing. So I work with a few people that are also ill and uh, actually my brother-in-law went into hospital recently and he's fine but he had to really make a big shift in his health and who he was. And that was the first book that I recommended to him was Dr. Joe Dispenza's because we can start creating our body to heal and start aligning our energies. And this is so important for all of us to be able to become better and really become that best version of who we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you read Supernatural? Cause I haven't yet. I have it here and I'm like- oh, You have to. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading like three books right now. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at you. I see you over there. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a advanced weekend with um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. So it's a lot of the intense meditations. So like two, three hours of meditation. And yeah. at some point you're thinking, am I doing this right? Am I getting the right thing? But then there's a moment in it where it just clicks. You're just like, whoa, I've been able to go to a higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. which takes you out of where you are at the current moment, which takes you out of the material world that we think. One thing that I really love about his work is he talks about how we can't overcome problems matter to matter. And what I mean by that is if I had a problem with you and I'm trying to deal with it with the same energy, never, never. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. If I had a problem with you and I'm trying to deal with it with the same energy that I come into the problem, it's going to be really difficult because we're going to try and think who's right, who's wrong. But if you're able to go to a place and Tony does this, a lot of people do it, you go to a place of gratitude, joy, and then come back into the situation. You're leading with a different emotion. You're leading with love on that. And you're able to overcome the problems a lot faster and really get down to the bottom of it. I cool. love that. That's such a good tool. And I just want to let that lead into my next question for you. Um, as a relationship coach and how you got into that passion and how that's been such like a highlight in your life. Can you share a little bit more about that? Oh, yes, I can, actually. So I've always been interested in relationships. Like when I was young, I was always fascinated about, okay, I was a kid that had the mushroom hairstyle, <laughs> that was a little bit goofy. So I was like, how can I actually meet the right people and meet the right woman? You know, first it came from personal side. So I started learning better things with that. But it was seven years ago, I met my wife. And when I first met her, you know, we had butterflies. I was so over the moon to see her. I met her at work. And when I first chatted her up and spoke to her, she stood me up on the first date. Oh, sassy girl. I, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, she broke my heart. And then... Aww. It was really funny because I saw her again the day after at work. So I went up to her and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to meet you yesterday. And she goes, so did I. I was like, yeah, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I uh, know. And then after that, we actually started dating. And the relationship went really good. You know, we were texting all night, calling all night. Everything was so amazing. There was a buzzing feeling inside that five months later, because I'm Indian, my family is really close to me, but also I had to tell my family about this partner really early on. Five months in, I told them. I remember they hated her. Like, they absolutely hated her. They were Why? just- Why? Because I'm the youngest in my family, and she was a bit assertive. And I was more like, chill, need to relax. <laughs> I did thought this assertive woman coming in, and they wasn't a fan. And at that point in there, for me, I had to really take, make a decision. You know, we're five months into our relationship. My family were at a level where they were like, we don't want you to be around here. We don't want you to be with her. And we might have to give you an ultimatum. that It's either her or us. Oh, no. I remember that point. I had to really think deep. And like I said to you, like, you've got to go from a higher energy source. I had to think deep. Where do I want this relationship to be? How do I want it to proceed? I thought, you know what, I only see love in this girl. So I followed it. And, you know, I had to step up into my leadership. I had to step up into being my own person to really make a difference and to really make a stand for being a man. 
And then, you know what, two years later, it was amazing because they met again and they loved her. And it was oh, just amazing. Wow, that's powerful. That's oh, a powerful man. point. And then that's why I actually come here to serve and help other relationships really reconnect their love, their passion back together. Because I think right now it's too easy for us to give up on relationships, to download Tinder, <laughs> to, nah. Oh, to hell no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like serendipity. <laughs> I'm old school, I guess, in that. I'm not saying I wouldn't. My mom's like, you should do that. And I'm like, no. no? Maybe if I'm still single in like a year or two, I'll <laughs> reconsider. But let's see what happens before that. <laughs> well, how's that been over lockdown? Um, have what? you been not speaking to anyone else or dating? That's completely gone now. Yeah, That's a big thing. I don't know what dating is. I've been out of the game a long time. <laughs> You're gonna get a lot of requests now, I think, on this. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to you. So let's yeah. talk about. <laughs> um. So yeah. So you do coaching and interventions. Can you talk a little? Oh, okay. Hello. 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 What kind of coaching is interventions I do? Well, like I said, I have a variety of coaching. I work with some people for like three months, four months. But my main area is the interaction with the people and the people in the community. So, by doing that, I'm able to understand where they are, where they're talking about, where they're going to talk about, and where they're going to talk about. Are we live? Are you there? Hey, are we back? I don't know if we're still live. I'm sorry, my my computer, it probably felt all my energy like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we're Jenny, live. Welcome back to Jenny from the chat mm, right there. I'm going to just restart this. I'm so sorry, but I have so many, I have so much more to ask. Hold on. Let okay. me see. Actually, Harpreet, can you tell me if we're still live? Oh, we're still live. I don't know how that works. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, so, we're good. Did you hear my last question? And Harpreet did say, I like this. Laugh out loud, ask Jen more. <laughs> no! Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> no, I, I want to know everything because I'm trying to, like, build the muscles and, like, <laughs> I want to have, like, the, the most kick-ass relationship in the planet. So, um, yes. Yeah, I guess you could ask me whatever you like. But um, I did want to know about more about the intervention stuff. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, um, yeah, so when we're talking about the interventions, yeah, so these sometimes what I do, especially right now, I'm doing it over Zoom. <laughs> I actually have one person sitting in one room and the other in the other room. And I know this sounds a bit odd because it could be together. Well, actually, what we're finding is that the male and female, they're able to really connect and be more open when they just feel a little bit more distance. Because a lot of them, um, the masculine energy, they're not really opening up as much. So now I'm doing the intervention within two different rooms, and then I bring them together right at the end. 
Oh. So it's like they've been pushed away from each other and then they actually open. They're allowed to open up in an open space and go through steps to really recreate love again. So, you know, the first step for recreating trust and love is really being able to commit and declare their love. And people think that just being with someone is enough of a declaration. That's bullshit. You know, I what we do, you know what I mean? Like we gotta go in and we gotta tell that person, you know what, I'm committing to you. And no matter what I'm committing right now, if things don't work out in six months, that's fine. Let's reorganize, let's look at it. And then we actually do a heartfelt intervention where we really connect and get the emotions going for one another. And then we're listening and we're getting the guy to be really present at this moment so you can open up. And that just allows the space and both relationships to be able to tell the truth, you know? Where we're stuck in what we believe is right and wrong. Like, oh, you left a towel on the floor, you did this, you did that. This is the most superficial level, but the truth is, what is it? Is she not being appreciated for the work that she does? Is he not being noticed? Is he not feeling significant? And then we really dive into all of this information and then commit the love to where it has to be and align the vision to the future. And you know what? I've had some beautiful breakthroughs and interventions where, you know, couples are actually at the stage where they could be divorcing, they could be leaving, oh, wow. and now they've actually found love together. I think that you might be really needed right now. Well, I know that you're yeah. really needed right now. And and how did you like? Where did you get your most learning, like how to give these tools and share this with people? Yeah, so I did the Robin Madani's course as well. Oh, um, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, that was good. Rockstar. So that. And, oh, that's amazing. So that taught me a lot. Also, live interventions with Tony. Also, wow. worked with Joe Dispenza. So now I try and put it into three different stages, which is a bit of the context, learning, and then let's go into the heart. And then let's get it into the subconscious. So I try to work with all three models there. So then they're not actually just listening to it, they're believing it and they're doing it. Yeah. But yeah. So I, I know that you're a Tony guy and like I put like some of my, I have like a relationship vision board. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love that. And I, I cut out like, you know, the um, the three, what is it? The three uh, feminine use and the three masculine use. Oh, yes. So <laughs> do you go by that? Like, you know, the man. The oh, man. Yes. Like, completely. So you've been David Destin say so freedom being the number one. Oh, my God. Now. That was so powerful. Oh, my. Freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not being criticized. Um, yeah. And appreciation is huge. You know what? You'll be shocked when I tell clients that they are completely taken away. So let's just cover it off quickly. Like the three C's for a guy, you can't, a woman cannot be closed around a guy because that closed energy, it means that a male has failed. So it means that I, you know what? I've not done my job properly. I've not been able to satisfy my beautiful woman. I've not been able to make her happy. And that is a killer. That's the most painful thing. And then we're also gonna be talking about freedom. You know, when we control a guy because we think, ah, we've got him, enclosed we've got him hooked in it's gonna be great but it actually makes him run away more so we can't be doing that mm-hmm. and then obviously the last one like you said criticizing we've got to praise but actually let's talk about the woman and let me see do you agree with all, all three of the years so <laughs> yeah okay um, so, so it's um being unseen so you don't get recognized or the man's not seeing you and then unheard and then unsafe just actually for a guy's point of view on this call, how often do you feel unsafe compared to, like say in the last two weeks, have you felt unsafe when you're going out for runs or anything like that? To be honest with you, sometimes every day. Sometimes every day, wow. Mm-hmm. Like slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I have some stuff with that, but it's I'm working through it and. No, but you know what, it's so common and it happens to so many people. Well, you know what the funny thing is? Sometimes when I say it to a guy, a guy don't realize the impact of how it is the other way and how important it is to protect. You gotta remember like- when I think I, that's I, my top qual. like when I feel safe with a man. Yeah. Oh my God. That's like, <laughs> that's my shit. <laughs> Guys, whoever's watching, man, you know what to do, right? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but it's really true. You know, I was dealing with um, one couple and at the start, the 
partner, the husband, was always protecting her. He was the main person there. But then when it got home and got um, brought into his family life, he wasn't there to protect her. And then the number one rule that she loved him by, the number one thing she loved him, he wasn't able to turn up or show up like that. And then it was a really bad thing for them, but easy to change, that's the thing. It's so easy to snap out of it, make a simple change, start being aware of it and start doing the differences. And then, you know what, now they've really rebuilt love, now they're happy, so it's good. That's amazing. So I've been, I've been, tr I'm trying to educate myself like a lot before I, cause I really want to know more about like the language between like male and female. Cause there's a lot that I don't mm. know. And I, you know, I started reading the Queen's Code. I'm just trying, oh, yeah. you know, like all the relationship books. And do you have any like keys or like little tidbits for me to like help communicate better with men? Like I've done Matthew Coast with, um, yeah. <laughs> like I just, I, with, when um, Joanna came to visit me, we were on like a Matthew Coast, like rock, <laughs> like we'd walk and listen to him and talk about it. Like where it's just such a awesome. interest for me. Like I want to be able to communicate with, even if it's relationship or not, like just with men yeah. better, better. That's cool. I think um, there's obviously big barriers with the relationship, but it, it comes where they both need to start intervening and start coming in together. So men generally don't talk as much. And I guess for you, and you know what? One of the best learnings I got was uh, the female, they don't need transition periods. Yeah. <laughs> So when a guy comes back from work, we need like, or male energy, masculine energy. When a masculine energy comes back from work, we actually need like five, 10 minutes to just get into our zen, to chill. And then we're gonna come back and focus on you and we're gonna give you love and we're gonna be like, hey, how was your day? How are you doing? You're looking beautiful. But we need that five, 10 minutes. And then for a woman or the feminine energy, they don't need that. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. All your love. Give me everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more than <laughs> an understanding, you know, and just understanding how their differences is. Like when, if he is giving one word answers, it's not like a female saying K. It's not the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> getting it's into some K. deep topics right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So when we're giving I'm one fine. word answers, I'm fine. You're right. I'm fine. Fine, yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. You forgot my birthday. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh no. Oh, but when we awesome. literally mean it, uh, when we offer a word or like we say we're good as a male, we actually okay. genuinely mean it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're not trying to trick you. We're not trying to read in between the lines. So that's a key part in the language. But also, you know what? I I encourage games. I do because um, you know. The masculine energy, we love games, we're quite competitive, we played for a long time. And you know what, everyone's competitive, it's not just masculine, feminine energy, we all are. So when we actually play a couple of games together, we're able to elicit more fun and ask deeper questions. So I'd play something like 25 question game. Oh, I uh, love that. Yes. But guys so, like that too? Guys love that because it's fun. You know, we can actually ask something without building that back talk. We could say something like, you know, tell me an embarrassing moment about yourself. What happened? Where was it? And then you truly get to connect on a deeper level. That like you're not actually just finding out how was your day, how was this, whatever happened. But you can really get deep. But I also put a rule in that game where I say you can't ask the same question. Because, you know, you can't just be like, oh, tell me about you. <laughs> we want to ask it, you know, we want commitment into this. So we want to be asking spontaneous, fun questions that I'm going to get to know who you are. So if I asked you now, Jenny. Uh-oh, here we go. I'm ready, anything. How was your first kiss? My tell first what kiss. Happened. Yeah. So my first kiss was in Chicago. Ooh, um, Chicago. <laughs> this little boy named Roy. We had like, I think we were best friends, but then like he rode his bike over and asked my dad if, I, I could be his girlfriend. And then my dad said, yes. Oh. Um, was he, did I kiss him though? I don't think I kissed him. Maybe I kissed him. I think we were just best friends. I think my first oh, okay. kiss was like a, a the, other, the bad little kid down the block yeah. who told me, oh God, I don't want to get into it. No, he asked if I wanted the Skittle in his mouth. I think that, that was my first kiss. I tricked you. <laughs> 
My kid's a smart boy. I'm telling you. <laughs> that is smart. That is smart. But, um, I, wrote, yeah, but I took that's it. That's <laughs> I remember my first kiss, and um, I was a bit older, actually. So I'm 14 years old. And I remember kissing this girl, you know, she was blonde, you know, beautiful girl. I was like, oof, you know, I, I can't wait to kiss her. I kissed her. And she goes, he kisses like a washing machine. I was like, so embarrassed. Like and then her? my friend came up to me. And went, How <laughs> I think I was. I was like, <laughs> and my friend came up to me and he goes, Sonny, how was the kiss? I thought, she kisses like a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. I know you're married now, but no, you know what? I'm going to ask a question about you and your wife. So how yeah. was your first kiss with your wife? And how is it different? Ah, nice. Oh, she's going to kill me. Can I remember the first kiss? <laughs> oh! <laughs> um, oh, actually, I do remember the first kiss. So actually, we've been dating for three weeks now. And I've not kissed her. And I thought, what's going on with this girl? Like, she's always, I'm giving her lifts everywhere. I'm taking her out. I'm like, is she just using me right now? I remember I got angry with her. Uh -huh. And we was meant to go on a big date. It was like our first official day outside of the city. So I'm going to be special. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. We've been <laughs> talking for three weeks. We've been dating kind of. And there's nothing in this. There's no actual passion. There's no love. You know what? I'm done. And then, then she kissed me. Oh. Oh. I was, so I had to be a little bit harder on her. And then she actually stepped up and she was like, you know what? I want you. I was like, ah, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so do you believe in like, so I love the quizzes, like a lot of my groups that I'm in, we do like the um, love language. Yes. We do uh, the Giada, whatever, the um, that Thing. yeah yeah um do you believe in that like the love language like oh yes so i actually get uh, my clients to use it first and cool. it's just so powerful to actually share it with one another and then we with some people we elicit strategies on how to improve their love so like a game plan a bit of an action plan what can you do how can you spice it up on a tuesday on a wednesday what are you going to do that's a, a bit of a cocktail of a relationship as opposed to okay, every day is the same drink, you know? So we spice things up. So then I get them to look at different game plans. What can we do differently? So, and that's how, um, that's a lot of the language, the love language that we use. So then when we're game planning, we actually use that information there. Okay, she loves words. Share some words, send some words. Words of affirmation. Yeah. Is that her, is that her top blueprint? Oh, for my missus? No, hers is acts of service. Oh, wow. Yeah, what, she knows I'm being around there, being someone. Um, what's yours? Like yeah, mine. Mine's words of affirmation, actually. Oh, nice. How no, about you? I'm um, physical touch. Oh, okay. Nice. And then I'm quality time. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Now, do We're you... for a treat today, aren't they? <laughs> they know you're single. They know everything about you. Man. You're gonna have a fan club by the end of this journey. <laughs> I, I, I was read before the call. I'm a little shy. Um, <laughs> but I have a question about because I'm curious. Like, so because I've heard like friends who've went to like the erotic ball and they talk about like how different um, top results don't jive is there a is there a thing like with the love language like oh uh, okay so what i get is um actually i'll tell you my main indicator of love from someone and what they need the most and this is something i picked up from tony but it's actually what they give the most so sometimes when you're with a partner and you can find out what they do the most is actually what they want the most absolutely so i learned that with gifts yeah you've done that with gifts because yeah you a lot of gifts like okay. if a people if like close people give me a certain gift, I'm like that's probably what they would like. Yeah, yeah. It, you know that's the beauty of it. So when you have somebody that always fills you with confidence and love with words, man, they're just waiting to hear them words back. They're just like, oh, this is it. Uh, that is the most beautiful thing ever. And then somebody that touches you, like when you give them a hug back, they're like, what have I done to deserve this? And that's one that I believe is the best test for knowing your partner. 
It's because when they do it so much, it's something that they really need. And we give out what we want the most mm -hmm. because we think, oh, if I give it, I'm going to receive it or I want it, so I'm going to do it. And when we do that, so really just um, take a second and step back from your relationship. Just like, um, just notice a couple of things. Like if you always come in and your partner's made you tea or water, they're always serving you in a nice way. Just think, hey, can I run the bath for them or can I serve them in another way? And that's going to make the day, that's going to make them so happy. And then vice versa, if they're sending that sweet text, when we send it back, man, they're going to be so in love. <laughs> Great <laughs> raving fans, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Great raving fans, yes. <laughs> so I just have one more question regarding that. Like, so say mine's um, physical touch, right? Obviously, I'm not being touched. So that is that like an indication of like, is it like, like if I take, the, if I took the quiz again, Oh, no. so say if um, when you're with a partner or you're with somebody, are you quite touchy? Or I am like, affectionate, yeah. Yeah. So then because you are affectionate to them, if they wanted to really understand you, they'll think, oh, you know what? She loves touching me. You know what? I'm going to touch her back a little bit. And PG-13 and anything. But yeah, they're going to... They... Yeah, go on. No, I was... Because I, I read somewhere, like, it doesn't mean, like, I'm, like, touchy-touchy. It just means that when I am touched... Or when I touch, it's it's significant, yeah. right? Isn't that yeah? Part when you are touched, oh yes. But because you give it, it's um, also something that you want. It's something that you crave a lot. So then we give it a lot. So then when you are touched, it's something so meaningful. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> awesome. We're good. So that's yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not like based on what's no, going it's not on. No, five languages. Oh, no. okay. Cool. This is more on like what we crave and what we want. For example, my brother actually. So obviously we come from the same um, mother, the same family and all of that. But my mom never hugged him as much when he was younger. Yeah. So this boy, he just loves the affection of a hug or a touch. And then when he gets drunk, he shows it massively. Like oh he, my God. he goes on his mind guard and he, he starts hugging you and you're like, whoa, you're getting close to you. Yeah, like a headlock, you're like <laughs> he just he just wants that hug. He just wants that connection. Then you give it back and he's just like Oh, I'm so deeply connected with who you are. <laughs> you know, but my mom was uh, very huggy with me, but she never always um, told me she loved me as much. So now when I hear it, I'm like, oh, wow. God. You know, I love that feeling. That's a beautiful but, distinction. Yeah. It's uh, interesting stuff. How we crave this is so much. Yeah. You're awesome, by the way. Thank you so much for this. No, I think people, awesome. are, people are going wild over here, loving this. So. <laughs> Um, this is remarkable. So I just want to respect your time. And I also want to tie in, um, Jenny from the chopping block. And I just want to know what's your favorite food and or recipe that you could share with us all. Oh, okay. So my favorite food actually is, um, Thai. Yes. Green Everybody's curry. Thai. Yeah. It's a green curry. It just does it for me. Oh, I never have I had green curry. Well, you're asking the wrong person. If I'm I sorry. Know how to <laughs> I don't know how to make it there. So the recipe isn't cool. I'll figure <laughs> that out. Oh man, we need to watch you make green curry. I'm gonna. See. It's happening. Put that on a live. I, I can't wait to watch that. Let's um see it. I'm gonna be in the kitchen with you. Uh, you will be. But yeah. Can you tell me more? About the cream curry? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The reason why I love it so much is when we go to Thailand. I, yes. um, well, Thailand, just the essence of it, the beauty of it. Lift the band, please. But when we're there, oh, the way they cook it fresh, mm -hmm. they have the fresh vegetables mm -hmm. inside there, the peppers, everything. Nice creamy sauce there with a bit of chicken. Oh, oh it's just perfect. Ooh, got it. Okay. okay. I'm in love. And I'm excited. I enjoy food, but I don't cook the most. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then I just want to end today, which I'm sure everyone's sad about, but I want to um, just ask you if there's anything that you'd like to share, maybe that's helped you through this time or that could further inspire us all. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, actually. So during this period of time, it's been a really important, actually, to play them kind of quiz games because... Times are getting a bit more mundane. So I guess some free tips to actually really help your relationship over this period of time. 
<laughs> Love that. Um, so, okay, let's do a little bit of long distance. Yeah, so let's look at that. So, FaceTime dates. Let's do this, yeah? FaceTime dates. Let's um, allow that person to be able to see you, have a bit of fun, be playful, and just really connect. Because when you can connect with the emotion, how they laugh, how they are, it's um, going to have a, long, a stronger pull on who you are inside. And then feelings will get a lot stronger. And then, you know, play games, ask deeper questions. Um, ask playful questions. Find out about the first kiss. Do whatever it takes. And just get to know them, you know, be playful with it. Be curious to who they are. And then the final one is, you know, show up differently. So I think it was Matthew Hussey that actually said this. He goes, don't show up as a song where it's a repeated song every day. Show up as an album. So we have a variety, you know, we can have that upbeat song. So one day you can have them deeper questions. One day you could be playful and fun and sweet. The next day you can show a different side to you. And just keep that variety going. Because right now it is difficult when we're locked inside. Yeah, I love that variety. It's funny, I I fell in love with um, uncertainty this past year. Oh, yes. And variety is on my vision board just because it's fun. Like, it, I hate, all right, so I loved uncertainty until shit got real and it was like painful variety <laughs> and uncertainty, <laughs> but I'm still down with it. I still, I still could drive with it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. How's that been showing up in your life? I know obviously on this call and doing these amazing videos and lives, that's fantastic. What else have you been showing up? I just, I always had variety and, and uncertainty kind of in my work because okay. um, I've worked multiple places and I got to interact with all different types of people and I got to meet new people every day. But now it's happening in my personal life. I mean, this, I don't know what this space is. I think it's personal and you know, professional, but I, I just love it. I love people. Yeah. And um, that we variety. the work that you're doing on this as well. You know, it's um, inspirational, you know, just watching this and seeing your bubbly energy every day. It's cool. Thank you, Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always bubbly, but I, when I get, when I feed off good energy, it's just like, you know, I'm just excited. You yeah. know, I have my, don't get it twisted. I had a little downtime last night. I, went into the hot tub alone and it wasn't sad or I just like my energy was just like, all right, you're tired. Like <laughs> you need yeah. to like chill. <laughs> I love that you said that because you know, a lot of people are now thinking, Oh, we need to be positive. We need to be like this. We can't give ourselves time to have downtime or a little bit of a lower energy. It's so important to actually acknowledge it and accept it. You know, it's fine. And Take it care. feels just as good to me. Like, I love to be happy. That's yeah. my, I'm, I love being happy, but like, I also like, I love that time alone just to like feel not as happy. You know, it's just like, it's balance. So. If we're always happy, it would just be like that. But then like, uh, like you know, yeah. <laughs> but when you have a little bit of a downtime, then you back up. Yeah, that's it. Then you're back into your face. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Well, Sonny, I'm so happy to have gotten to know you better. And yeah, I'm excited to build a, a d even deeper friendship with you. And I'm just so grateful for you for coming on today. I think this is literally probably one of my favorite calls ever. So thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. And thank you for having me on and um, with your amazing energy spirit. And even for this beautiful open space, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to have that deeper connection and continue our progress and relationship. So great. Okay. All right. All right, guys, we love you, and I hope you have a remarkable day. Make today the best day of your life. Love you guys. Ciao.